The first session, the opening session at the Darbar Hall this year is called the Bangla Who Done It. And I would like to invite onto stage the two speakers in this session. Gautam Chakrabarti will be in conversation with Pleena Bose. Yeah. Yeah. While they're seated. Uh, if you could make your way onto stage. Uh, this is presented by the Mahindra Humanity Center. The theme for this talk is Crime and Punishment. And to introduce the two speakers and tell us a little bit about the session. Um, I apologize. Mr. Baba will introduce the Mahindra Humanities Center for us and tell us a little bit about it. So without further ado, I would like to invite Mr. Homi Baba to give the introduction. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I can't see most of you here, but I can hear you. And it's a great, great pleasure to be here. Last year was my first visit to the Jaipur Literary Festival. Namita Gokhale, Willie Dalrymple, Sanjoy Roy very generously invited me, and I was stunned. I had heard many things about it. Most people found it very invigorating. Some people found it a bit of a mela. Other people found it a kind of celebration and a festival. And when I came here, I thought it was all of these things. It really is one of the most lively cultural and literary venues. And what particularly impressed me was the broad and generous way in which the notion of the literary was conceived of by the organizers of the festival. As you well know, in 18th century England, the notion of poetry or poesy included everything from the writing of poetry to architecture. And there was something like that going on here. It, this place has become a cosmopolitan international crossroads for those who are interested in literature, music, politics, theater, the media. And it is a great privilege for us at Harvard and the Mahindra Humanities Center at Harvard to be allowed to collaborate and participate in this great festival of ideas and speakers. I won't take more of your time knowing that, you know, I'm only the kind of hors d'oeuvre for a very substantial uh, next course. But I do want to say that when you come to a venue like this, your faith and your belief and your hope in the humanities and the arts is affirmed. I was speaking in Bombay late at a, a big event last night, and I gave them just one statistic, one statistic that I uh, managed to winkle out of a pile of papers about the state in the United States, and I think in the United States in many ways the state of the arts and humanities is better than in other places, although it's not rosy. But if you think about it, every year in the United States, the expenditure on junk mail, you know the stuff that gets pushed through your door that you then push into your, in your dustbin, very often with high production values, that junk mail, the, the, the expenditure is 40, for around 45 billion, uh, 45 billion dollars. However, the expenditure on textbooks from kindergarten to 12 and beyond is 10 billion. Junk mail is four times the expenditure on junk mail four times than on school textbooks. In a big way and in a small way, the Jaipur Literary Festival, together I hope with our collaboration, will do something to say this is wrong. These priorities are wrong, and the arts, humanities, and literature rock. This is where you ought to be. The festival has been doing this we hope the humanities, fest the humanities, the collaboration with us at Harvard will also enhance it. Uh, the theme for this year is crime and punishment, something that was initially uh, suggested by Namita Gokhale, and I'm very glad she did it. Of course, if you have spent you know, a weekend in India, you know that crime and punishment is rife, and if you've spent any time anywhere else in the world, this is one of the great universal themes. Out of it comes 
a whole host of issues. Do criminals need to be defended? What is the, what are the ethics of testimony? What is the notion of the witness? How do we assess the nature of a crime? Right through this festival, there will be sessions dealing with these issues. And I'm delighted that the first one is here today. Thank you very much, and I'm honored to be here. Thank you. Yeah, are we ready? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah? yeah? Louder. Yes. Yeah. Uh, hello and welcome to this first session, the Bangla Who Done It. I think it's a well known fact that most people growing up in Bengal, particularly Calcutta, either want, want to be a detective or a director. And I think on this note, we'll start with the first session, which is the Bangla Who Done It, the detective and the hero as the detective in Bengal. Uh, it's 1940s. Calcutta is this new bustling metropolis with a lot of crime, increasing crimes and urban squalor, which is feared by the middle classes. And in this scenario, we have this private investigator who calls himself the truth seeker, the Shottan Beshi, Bomkesh Bakshi. Um, I'll introduce uh, Gautam Chakravarti, who's done a very interesting work on the Bangla fiction, Bangla detective fiction. And he'll give us a bit about the first and the initial context of the emergence of the Bengali detective. Gautam, please. Well, can you think you hear me? Oh. Okay. You have to put it. Fine, I think, uh, yeah. Is it better now? No. I hope that's better. Okay, so. Um, hmm. Yeah. So, thank you, Ruplina, for that introduction. And thank you, Mike, for that glitch. Um, I would say that Bengal in the 1940s, from the 1930s to the 1950s, was a hotbed, a sort of a productive sw swamp of ideas, currents, ideological, political. There was a Telangana movement. Uh, there's a sort of, not the present day Telangana movement, but the the peasant struggles in Telangana and Tebhaga that were going on, and also the independence movement, the urban. pacifist, the urban, uh, the, the yeah. urban squalor, the famine. So it was like a whole potpourri of impressions, challenges, yeah. um, influences, and conflicting loyalties. And out of such situations, we always see some sort of a hero figure. But the Bengali detective is not just a hero. He's not just a sort of Superman-like hero. In many ways, you can say that he's some sort of a pan-national representation of an Indian selfhood, an alternate Indian selfhood, a selfhood that is hybrid. And I, I dare not utter this term in front of Homi, but still, I would sort of presume and say that the Bengali detective represents a hybrid of colonial influences, of non-colonial Europhone influences, and of the demands of the time, the Second World War being no longer. Right. And yeah. Shottan Nishi, as you pointed out, Shottan Nishi means truth seeker. Yeah. It's a detective who's also calling himself a truth seeker more than a detective. How does that emerge at that time? And what is the conditions of that kind of a truth seeker who's uh, suddenly surfaced in society? Well, as I, uh, thank you for that. I mean, as I wrote, in, as I wrote Bumkesh Bakshi, who has been taken up by Doordarshan, I believe, later on. Yes. And yeah. uh, sort of uh, serials have been made. And recently, f you, we, you, very, you. Several films have been made. We'll see a clip very soon, but yeah. please continue. So yeah. he prides himself on not being a private investigator, but being a truth seeker. Mm -hmm. And I argue that this element of seeking the truth is an element of linking mm -hmm. the 20th century. Bengali slash Indian intellectual to the Enlightenment discourse and the post-Enlightenment discourse. So it's the sort of fruition mm. of the Bengali slash Indian intellectuals connection to the Enlightenment. So it's sort of this rationalist inquiry which mm. finds expression mm. in searching for the truth is an Enlightenment project. 
and it just gets modified with the conditions of modernity and the and the approaching postmodernity. Yeah, right. Conditions of modernity, of course, being a very important point, being 1940s and being, of course, a colonial capital. Absolutely. I mean, ec erstwhile colonial capital. I think we'll, uh, it'll be incomplete if we don't see a visual representation of Bomkesh. So, could you please play uh, Bomkesh one? This is a 1967 film by Satyajit Ray. It's called Chidiya Khana, which means the zoo. Clip one, uh, Bomkesh one. One. Yeah, please. With the sound. विचित्र जी बेशा मेरे दोनों ही नहीं आपको बट जगी दाव शाप के दौर चलेगा It's all fine. Yeah. 
So yeah, so that's the that's again our one of our earliest representations um, of Bomkesh. It's interesting because the reference is very clearly there of the detective, the Sherlock and the Watson. And uh, would you like elaborate on that? Yeah, I mean, uh, later on, maybe we can talk a bit about Feluda, Satyajit Ray's immortal creation, and how he uh, differs a bit from Bomkesh. But coming to Watson, yes, Watson's a sidekick. Uh, Bomkesh has a sidekick, Ajit. But there's a difference. I mean, Watson and Holmes are friends, definitely. But they're friends with a certain amount of gradation. There's a gradient there. There's a certain sure. slope, a certain yeah. incline. Of course, I mean, detectives are supposed to have slightly less endowed friends in the sense, mentally endowed friends. But Ajit is Bomkesh's bosom buddy. He's, I might even invoke the Sanskrit poetic category of Sakha. So he's in many ways um, Bomkesh's Sakha. Obviously his mind doesn't work as sharp as Bomkesh's does, yeah. but he is there at, a, at an equal equality of sharing with Bomkesh. Right. And one point about Watson also is, that this is a very quote unquote nationalized, Indianized Watson. This Watson responds to certain Indian psycho emotional keys mm. and in, in therefore again is a hybrid, as uh, we cannot fail to mention. Right. Uh, it started with Bomkesh, of course, in the 40s, and it was a very interesting time for the city also because the emergence of the Indian cities around. Uh, starts around that time and right. Calcutta being one of the you know iconic early cities. Mm -hmm. What about the other figures because we know that there were a lot of lesser famous detectives, Bengali detectives and it would be interesting to sort of take a stock of who all were there till we came to Feluda who again because of Satyajit Ray and because of you know the various of course the publishing, the various um, adult young adult fiction, the graphic novels, Feluda went on to become a very popular figure. But what about the other figures of that time? Well, there are actually a plethora of figures. And what's interesting to note, I'll mention a few examples. Right. Um, one is, well, Bomkish is a very, and you might even perhaps uh, wonder why I use that phrase, he's a crypto-nationalistic figure. He sort of posits hmm. strategies of nationalistic constructions of the modern Indian, young modern Indian self. But, right. <clears throat> sorry. Um, the other detective figures that we see in the 20s, 30s, 40s, they are very, what you might, uh, what you might even pejoratively call them wogs, westernized oriental gentlemen. I mean, someone like Dr. Dilip Chaudhuri, right. who was built on the forebuild, sorry, that's German, I'm, I'm sort of in a stage when I'm not learning German and forgetting English. So he was a model for uh, Dilip Chaudhuri, Dr. Thorndike is an American medical detective and Hemendra Kumar Roy, the creator of Dr. Chaudhuri, even acknowledges that, that he's lifting this character lock, stock and barrel from Dr. Thorndike. So that's right. one model of the medical forensic detective mm. where the case is given, where the solution, you're told who the, mm. um, who the, uh, the victim is, who the criminal is and then it's backward, it's resolved with forensic evidence. Another duo who is exactly opposite from the nationalistic position Bomkesh has, and Bomkesh has various anti-colonial positions at various points of time, which is probably because Sharadindu, his creator, was a very nationalistic uh, figure. figure. Yeah, yeah. But the other duo, it's called, it's a Laurel Hardy duo almost, Joyanto and Noro Narayan, Norendro and Narayan. Right. They actually collaborate with the Calcutta police Right. to prevent a group of Bengali freedom fighters who are liaising with the Japanese and trying to undercut uh, British military preparedness during 1943-44. And this is very interesting. Yeah, completely different from the other uh, uh, detectives that other we have detective. seen. Yeah. And not only that, this cuts against Bengali sentiment, Indian sentiment, as we all maybe know. Hmm. Uh, the Indian National Army was formed by Netaji Subhash right, Bose right. with the Japanese. Mm. This directly goes against Indian mm. sentiment. And the last uh, example I would mention is that of uh, Joyanto and Manik. Middle class detectives, you might even call them bourgeois detectives. They have their less trade in Inspector Haldar, who's very fond of food. But again, very, very hybridized. So here's a, here's a suburban Bengali gentleman in the form of the Daroga who likes his kachori, who likes his jalebi, who mm. comes for. Mm. And interestingly, 
he comes to the detectives to partake of Western Anglo Anglophiliac leisure. Hmm. So he eats his Indian food in his own thana or home, but he comes to the detective for chicken sandwich. So the detective is a figure of Western influence. It's a right. figure of a Western window in this sense. Which of course we know because the influences are again Sherlock, Sherlock Holmes and, and Poirot and so on mm -hmm. and so forth. And um, I actually now would like to ask you about Feluda because then the next important figure which is again leading, I mean the whole idea of mystery solving is something which is which is almost like a, a hobby in a, in a lot of um, circles in Bengal. So right. Feluda being one of the influence, uh, great influences. So how does Feluda differ from Bom Bomkesh? I mean, where does Ray begin to like write and depart from the Bomkesh figure? That's a great question because I, from my perspective, Feluda and Bomkesh, while not being binary opposites, naturally not, they have various uh, sort of connections and uh, commonalities, but in some respects they have a positional difference, they have a percep perceptual difference, right, yeah. their constructions, the way they are created, what they represent, the representational politics mm. is very different. Right. Ray creates Feluda as a rational skeptic, mm. Feluda is a skeptic, we, we are not told he's a Marxist, we are not sure he's a Marxist. We think he has socialist, egalitarian sympathies, but we have no reason to suspect he's a Marxist. But he's definitely skeptic. He's definitely ultra-rationalistic. Mm. Bomkish, on the other hand, is crypto-nationalistic. Mm. He's not irreligious. I mean, he doesn't say he's religious, but he doesn't deny religion. But Feluda overtly, is covertly does it. Mm. Feluda is also westernized in terms of his leisure and his pleasure. He, he adores, he appreciates Western classical music, he listens to a lot of Bach and Beethoven, which, which represents Ray's own interests. Ray was a great aficionado of, course, yeah. of Western classical music. Feluda is always, uh, has this, for example, many characters in Feluda's novels are fraud saints in the sense, sham godmen. Yeah. I think this is a topic not unknown to us even today. Yeah. So, um, in those, and Feluda shows this 60s anger against fraud in commerce, fraud right. in religion. In fact, he takes a very socialist position, which is probably keeping in tune with the politics of India in the 70s and the 80s. So, this comes into Feluda right. in a more pronounced way than Bomkesh. So, that's how I feel they're different. Right, that's interesting. Um, I think we should, like, at this point, definitely have a visual reference of Feluda. Can we play the Feluda 5 clip, the last clip? It's like an alienation because I don't have the clips in front of me, so. Yeah. Disjuncture. 5. Last clip. Because we talked about disguises, so it would be interesting to look at this clip from its place. Is it clip number five huh? or six? Five or six? Just please play. While they're playing the clip, I would... Uh, okay, uh, please play the sixth clip and uh, we'll continue the...
because in this the detective is talking about uh, the client trying to fool the detective so it's also what you said about fraud that feluda is again somebody who is engrossed uh, he was very interested in you know in in basically the truth but he doesn't call himself the truth seeker how does that differ well you see feluda takes a more professional attitude in fact in many of feluda's works he's 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 a detective yes but as you saw this reference to the brains the yes, brain, brain weapon, weapon yeah so he's a person who basically is as i see him in the encyclopedic encyclopedista tradition mm. so he's a man of learning and this is especially clearer when you remember a character of one of feluda's novels shidhu jatha shidhu jatha is this person of encyclopedic learning he basically has records from the 19th century mm. and feluda he's like google for feluda in yeah. pre google time right. so he goes to shidhu jatha and asks everything about everything on earth and yeah. he gets an answer now this is this tradition mm. of indian learning of retentive memory in retentive cognitive traditions in india which stretch across the subcontinent right. so bengal obviously with as we see in the case of feluda and shidhu jatha there are people like that in the chols of bombay there are people like that in pune there are people like that in delhi so this is this generational aspect of indian knowledge which is right. retention through memory yeah. and retention through brain power and not necessarily production but retention right yeah and this is very important for feluda because he is he's on the one hand westernized professional yeah. but on the other hand he tries to link himself to this indian tradition of knowledge production and knowledge retention right bomkesh imbibes this tradition of knowledge production and retention oh. but he doesn't have to link to it because he's situated within it and because feluda is 
posits himself outside this uh, tradition, so he has to link up to it. Otherwise, there's not much of a difference. And Feluda is also a very well-traveled man. So in a way, the detective hero is also a way through which uh, local audiences were reading about uh, you know, various other places. Of course, the Ray movies came in the 70s, and then you, you could see Rajasthan, and you could see Banaras, and you could see the, the new India, and which sort of contributes also to the travel bug, Absolutely. I would say, of, uh, of, of Bengal. Absolutely. So uh, can we then say that uh, Feluda is also this adventurous young man who is the he detective hero, who is also very physically active, unlike Bomkesh, who is also stable at one place? Yes, I mean, uh, that's absolutely true. And we can also say that Feluda represents a more, uh, uh, there are certain subtle and not so subtle class differentiations mm. between Feluda and Bomkesh Bokshi. So Bomkesh Bokshi is the suburban, non-suburban, North Calcutta, um, mm. uh, middle slash lower middle class detective who mm. solves, as uh, many people would pejoratively call it, petty bourgeois problems, which are, I mean, I'm not using that in the Marxian mm. sense. I'm just saying who would solve lower middle class problems, problems which were close to the heart of the independence movement, so to speak. Right, but right. Feluda is a more gentrified, in a way, is a more mm. upper middle class uh, detective who solves, he, most of his clients are actually retired, um, retired uh, civil servants or the so-called box swallows. This is Ray's favorite term, corporate giants, corporate industry. Mm. So the box swallows, the zamindars, the former zamindars, Zamindar. former maharajas. For example, we are in Rajasthan, and one of Feluda's stories mm. is called is based in Dungargar. I'm not so sure there's an, there is an actual place called Dungargar, I believe, or maybe there is. And Phil, one of his stories is based in Dungargar, and his client is the local maharaja mm. whose ring is lost. So Feluda has this class orientation. He caters to the pan-Indian Bengali, but also pan-Indian upper class. He's also in Bombay dealing with Bollywood, with which you're familiar. Right, right. Uh, the other interesting thing about the detective duo, because it's always a duo, of course it has to be a duo, you know, you, the detective needs his um, the companion. Not always, but yeah, usually. Usually, yes. Uh, is also the absence of women, be it Bomkesh, be it Feluda, there are no women. Why is that so? Hmm, that's a, that's a toughie. <laughs> but um, but first, there is a woman, Bomkesh gets married. In Bom the end. In the end. Um, towards, not at the end, but he, uh, towards the last second half of his career, he's married. Actually, from the half of his career, he's married and he's happily married. But his wife doesn't stay with him. She stays in Patna. So again, you see a very middle class Bengali orientation. Probashi Bangali, the Bengali who lives in Jaipur, the Bengali who lives in Patna, the Bengali who lives, Probash for lazy, us lazy Bengalis is like Jaipur. I mean, that's like the farthest we could go at that time. So he has a wife. Feluda seems, and you're absolutely right about Feluda. Feluda has this Holmesian, Sherlock Holmes like. I wouldn't say, Feluda never mentions anything about women. It's a very sanitized narrative. Feluda yeah. almost as if women didn't exist for Feluda. Yeah. And I personally find that in un, uh, in, inexplicable. But one reason could be that Ray wrote these stories mostly for adolescents and young, young boys. And young boys, yeah. basically. So there again, the, the yeah. it's, it's a, it's a pub, absent uh, yeah, female uh, The absent audience. female audience. And yeah. I believe late Feluda films have later on tried to correct this and give more agency. Would you think so? Or no, you? but I think it's irrelevant also. I mean, because yeah. you know they are from a context, and I think it. So uh, the other thing would be to me that it's in a way that women also represented domesticity probably. So the detective wants to like escape that domesticity of marriage and children mm. and you know so on and so forth and have a life of adventure, that, yeah. that is what yeah. I would sort of imagine. And here I would bring, like to bring in, uh, you know, this, I, mean, I mean, as we are both huge fans of the Bengali detective, the Indian mm. detective, but um, the Indian detective, at least in the 40s and 50s, did have this somewhat, should we say, somewhat, I'm, I'm, I'm hesitant to use this term, but a somewhat sexist um, mm. lack of appreciation for the ability of women to do things like physical right. things. So this infamous Sanskrit uh, phrase, pot, Bengali phrase, pothe nari which means on the road you can't take women. Oh. 
they, many detectives like Jayanto and Manik, Hemendra Kumar Roy's detectives, who are even more lower middle class than right. Bomkesh Bokshi, often quote that. So yes, there is definitely a sort of sexist, uh, uh, there is a sexist framework that's undeniable. Uh, the other interesting thing is that why do, don't we have other detectives, I mean we don't have detectives in other uh, languages. I'm not saying we don't have, of course we have a lot of, we have Ibn Safi, we have other uh, writers, but why is it that suddenly now, I mean we've seen that in recent times Bomkesh, the figure of Bomkesh is also being revived. You have a mainstream Bombay representation um, uh, uh, of Bomkesh Bakshi, which is under production right now by Dibakar, who's again a very, uh, Dibakar Banerjee, who's a very prominent direct, director. So are we trying to now like find the figure of the detective hero, the Indian um, uh, mystery crime solver? I believe so and uh, I would be, uh, I would just not claim Bomkesh Feluda for Bengal. I believe when these writers were creating these characters, right. they were of course the idiom was Bangla, but these people were basically pan-Indian hmm. in sensibility. Hmm. Therefore, Bomkesh Bokshi more so, which is why he probably got taken up much more on television and cinema. Right. Doordarshan, I believe, made a number of, with Rajat, uh, with Rajat, Rajat, Kapoor, with yes. Rajat Kapoor. And that was quite successful, I believe. So he sort of translates better to the pan-Indian audience because he's a, he's a less westernized figure in the sense he has his right. Bengali bahu with a sari and a sindoor and all that. So he gels, he sort of travels well hmm. all over India. As to your question about detectives in other Indian languages, I must admit I am not, uh, I'm not uh, conversant with detectives in other Indian languages, but I believe these things, uh, detectives, it, it's a very, it, it has, it, these are culture specific. Right. Why do the Germans have no detective writers? England has thousands and Germany only has, they have, yeah. England, Germany, England has its Le Carres, its hmm. Conan Doyles, its, it, you know, the list is endless. In Germany, the only detective fiction writer of repute, I mean, there are some, but of repute is this German writer of Turkish origins who wrote just, who, who sadly is no longer with us. He died of, he, he passed away at a very young age, but he wrote the best known and most popular German works of detective fiction based in Berlin, oh. uh, Nacht der Wende, sorry, that means Berlin after 1989, Berlin after the fall of the Berlin Wall. Right. So I believe detective fiction is a culture specific mm. thing in many ways. Why do you have America and England awash with detective fiction? Yeah. Also the Scandinavian detective fiction, I mean entire... Absolutely, uh, yeah. absolutely. The Henning Mantel. Yeah. And yeah, and I would like to sort of, I'm not sure, sorry, I interrupted you. No, please continue. Yeah. No, I would, uh, I'm not sure about this, but I'd like to say that um, um, perhaps there is an anglophone orientation to the figure of the private detective. I mean, the best detective fiction in the world, hmm. empirical evidence proves it, is anglophone, written in right. England, America and the Commonwealth, although we have other options. Right. Should we watch another clip of Bomkesh before we, we conclude? conclude? Sure. Yeah. Uh, can we please play Bomkesh too? Thank you. Uh, the other thing is that what happens, to what, what about the, the mysteries? The, do we see a change in the nature of mysteries from the 40s to the 70s, the kind of uh, mysteries that we're talking about? We definitely do. I mean, in the 40s, the Raj is still very much present. The nationalist movement, Bomkish is always dressed in dhotis. Yeah. And uh, as you saw, dhotis and a vest, traditional lower middle class Bengali attire. Feluda represents more the socialist consensus, Sound. as you will see. Here's Bomkesh in his dhoti and genji. The sound is not playing. Yeah, as, as you saw, he's shaving. He, they're basically in a mess. Mess is like an English word for the army messes, but in Bengal, their messes are like small ho hostels for um, young people who are working in the cities and studying in the cities. Hello, Mr. Sen. Good morning. Hi, so I'm going to go to the city. Yes, Japanese. Horticulturist. Uh, 
this is Bonkesh uh, disguising because this guy was also a very important part of the detective's entire persona and skill set. It's also very interesting because Japan, the Raj Japan. day. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, as yeah. A, as that's again uh, the detective who's also making mistakes. You know, it's, yeah. there's also this the a real aspect to it uh, more than Peluda. I can imagine Peluda would immediately start speaking in Japanese or something. Probably, yeah. and also the fact that you see in this train scene, this is 40s, 50s Calcutta. This is actually right. 50s Calcutta, which is being shown just after independence. You see people who have in a suburban train. Mm -hmm. You see people who've traveled to Japan and lived in Yokohama, had a business there. Yeah. So it shows how in India there has always been this global angst. India today is positioning herself as a global power, as an economic superpower and mm. other okay. kinds of uh, yeah. power aspirations. But this aspiration is not only today's aspiration. This aspiration goes back to I would even say the 19th century, which has sustained the national right. movement. But what you see in the scene is not just a detective making a mistake, which you, you're right. It's also about a, a, a sort of global aspiration of in, the of Indian the intelligentsia. Yeah, yeah. So that, that I think is key to the Bengali detective, his global footprint. Right, right. That's, a, that's again, at this note, I think our time is up. Yeah. We'll take some questions sure. and it was lovely having this conversation. Pleasure was all And uh, time for questions, yes. Yeah, please. Yes. Uh, morning, Rupina and Gautam, thanks very much for this. Uh, just had a quick question on Peluda. Uh, you mentioned the lack of women in Peluda's you know, stories on Peluda. The other lack which I find is there's no gory murder in Peluda. Uh, Sorry, there's there's no, no murder, there is no horrific yeah. crime. Yeah. And it could be because it was meant for children, that could be a possibility. Is it, uh, is it so? And does it therefore mean that Peluda is less popular than Bomkesh? And is that the reason perhaps he has not translated so well in films? Um, well, you're absolutely right. The reason there is no uh, bloody, gory murder scene in, in Peluda there are murders, of course, many murders in Feluda, but they're not depicted in that way it's because it's basically for young adults and adolescents and even schoolboys, basically, schoolboys and schoolgirls. I remember I had a history teacher in school who said, I could write stories like that. I don't believe that, but anyway. So anyways, the other reason is that, uh, uh, you see, the, that's part of the Bhadralok ethos. The Bhadralok ethos takes a very 19th century, I mean, I'm, I'm sort of speaking very loosely here, but the Bhadralok ethos is in parts based on Marxism, is on parts based on Gandhian uh, liberalism, and in parts based on 19th century Victorian moral ethical frameworks. So Victorian moral ethical frameworks, the bloodlessness of the crimes in Peluda would have in my opinion, would probably trace back to that. But thanks for that. Yeah, the crime always happens before or in absentia, Absolutely. without the, and Absolutely. then the detective comes in after that. Yeah, it's very P.T. James also. She yes, also does course. that. It's, yeah. it's 19th century Britain written all over it. Yeah. Questions? Any other questions, please? Sir, it's not actually a question. Uh, I wanted to invite you to our school, Step by Step High School, because you know, Bionkesh Bakshi is a well renowned uh, show mm -hmm. uh, on Doon Darshan. Yeah. I watched it. So I want you to, I want to invite you to come to our school. To come, to go to their school and talk. Uh, 
any, if you have time afterwards. I would love to. You please contact the organizers, and yeah. I'm sure they'll sort of accede to your request. Thanks. That's very kind of you. Thank you so much. What's your name? Uh, Rahul Garg. Thank you so much, Rahul. Very kind of you. Thanks. Yeah, Isha. Hi, so I just wanted to know, why do you think there hasn't been a popular detective after Feluda in uh, Bengali and in other Indian languages? Mm -hmm. uh, who do I think is the next popular? No, no I th I'm asking why has there been no uh, popular ah, okay. detective after Feluda? Yeah, that's a question Ruplina asked also. We couldn't really take that up. Um, thanks for that question. Um, hmm, this is a difficult one to answer. And I wouldn't be able to answer that without going into controversial sociological investigations of Bengali intellectual, um, shall we say, trajectories after the 1970s and 1980s. Um, I would simply say that the, the production of children's literature, young adults' literature, has changed in Bengal, keeping in tune with public taste. I mean, these are very broad categories. I know I'm on muddy waters here. But I would say you find Shoshtipado someone, Shoshtipado Mukhopadha, Shoshtipado something writing, Shosh, sorry, Shoshtipado Chattopadhyay writing basically rip-offs of the five infamous five, but in a very, uh, I can see nodding heads, so I'm hitting, I'm getting it right, that means. Pand of Goenda, which is basically an Indianization of the famous five. But it has lots of blood and gore, it has lots of urgency, immediacy, because that's how public taste has changed. You know, the leisured, I'm sorry, I'm peeping like this because of the light here. The leisured public taste that you see reflected in Feluda, the leisurely conversations, sharing the telephone, servant bringing tea, these are perhaps not really, apart from the servant bringing tea, not really part of, uh, uh, you know, today's. Uh, Bengali Concerns. public oh, yeah. sphere, so yeah. I believe that's I that's an I imperfect answer. I know, but I don't. I think it's also answer. to do with the changes in the in the in the hero through cinema, because our primary means again, Bombay or more than writing, like you said, that somebody said here that we like the show that which comes on Doordarshan. We all for visual medium, and it sort of changed. Maybe now we will see a revival because you exactly. have again exactly. the figure of the detective uh, being revived it's, in cinema. But I, probably in the 70s with the angry young man and the, the change in the, in the hero, the construction of the hero, the detective was somehow lost, I would think. I would think yeah. so and I totally agree with Ruplina and I'd just like to add that uh, the Bengali uh, detective has changed because Bollywood has changed. Because public taste all over India has changed. There has been, I don't want to say taste has been gentrified or taste has been commercialized. I don't want to look down on anything. I don't want to look up at anything. Things happen because they happen. Yeah, that but is the that is, this is what the moment is asking for. The only other point, the last point I'd like to add here, is that, um, as you pointed out, it's 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 the the angry young man. We Indians have become angry and restless. No, we see the the arm admi, the common person on the street, becoming very angry and restless, often committing crimes, horrific crimes often committing problematic things, often taking bold and radical decisions, social, cultural, political, right. ideological, whatever. And that is reflected in detective fiction too. So it's, it's not, it's not d divested from the context. I think analysis and logical deduction is also sort of lost from the public sphere. Question, yes. Can um, sorry. Yeah, please. Um, I was wondering whether, given the kind of the, the, the Adda type social networks in Bengal, particularly amongst people of that sort of class, did that affect these um, detectives? I mean, were they part of these sort of collectives? Did they have that kind of social life or did they stand outside of it? Yeah, absolutely. You, uh, they are not only part of the social life, they are the center of the social life. 
In, in my essay, I've looked at how in one of Bomkesh's stories, which is luckily available in, in a very capable translation, a very accessible and capable translation, we see uh, the, the victim couple, so to speak, the couple whose case will later on be taken up by Bomkesh, coming dressed in Western, uh, Western attire, eating food on the table, but eating Bengali food. And then the guy goes to, off to an adda, where he's connected to a doctor, a detective, and all, so on. And the mode of detection here, as we perhaps got a sense from the clips, which thanks to Ruplina, it was wonderful clips, uh, we got a sense of the conversational aspect of detention, detection in that. So I would say he's bang in center of the Adda culture. And a North Calcutta Adda culture. I would say the crimes are very uh, contextual in the sense the crimes represent the criminal sort of statistics of the times. There are no, not really, actually there are no financial crimes I can think no of yeah. in vocation. There's not a lot really. of, I think deception is a very important sort of, uh, pr was a problem clearly of that time because Bomkesh's crimes, the, the ones that he's solving, a lot of them are about disappearance and deception. And uh, yeah, I think deception. And fraud, fraud. Fraud, murders. Inheritance is a big issue. So inheritance, fraud is a big issue. Uh, Partho Chatterjee's essay on the imposter of Bhawal. I mean, that sort of thing, Peluda is like keen on. He sort of immediately would connect to that, and that would be a prime case for him. Jewel thieving, uh, relationship problems leading to murders, leading to uh, perhaps suspected adultery, adultery being a huge taboo in the Bengali society of that time. Uh, identity theft is a big issue. Identity theft not in the modern sense, but in terms of someone masquerading as someone. But no really, no gecko phenomena, no, no financial market crime. No Madoff, nothing, nothing like that. And Bomkesh, of course, has murders. There are murders yeah, which he's, which he's solving. Bad, and murders, bad with murders, stabbings yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And it's also the change. I think with Bomkesh, the interesting thing is because it's 40s and 50s. It's also reflecting the change from the feudal to the to the modern to the colonial. Absolutely. You know, so that that is resulting in a lot of like crimes. And of course, the fear of the middle class towards the, the new migrant population who's coming into Calcutta. Yeah, all say. these things are represented in Bomkesh and also the partition riots. There's yeah. a recent film which I saw which has put in a lot of that partition material into Bomkesh. His stories actually don't deal much with the partition. Partition is basically a kind of taboo in Bomkesh. Not taboo, but he sort of skips over it, which I guess is the Indian response to partition also. It's like, it's not the truth and reconciliation as in South Africa. It's more like suppression and hoping to forget. I'll take one last question, please. Yeah. Um, Maybe yeah. two, because he has. Two, okay. Yeah. With Poirot and Holmes, you have the traditional which is a much more individualistic, there's the detective and then there's the bad guy and it's between the two of them. Okay. But uh, when you translate that into the Bengali scenario, how does that play out? Because the social ethos is changing and you're not talking about an individualistic society as such. I would like you to comment on that. That's a brill you have to give a quick answer. That's a brilliant question because indiv uh, b detectives are primarily self-obsessed individuals. Yes. They, are, they make no bones about other people, but the Bengali detective, the Indian detective, is an individual functioning organically within a society, a social milieu, as Homi said, a sort of Adda circle. But Holmes and Holmes is a much more alienated figure. Poirot also, I mean, he's a Belgian stuck in London, yeah. sn scoffing at everything, especially English food. So there's much more alienation, I, I, I would say. I mean, this is a very superficial answer because we don't have time, but. It's, yeah, it's they're more alienated. Yeah. Yeah. Last. Anyone? No. Okay. Sir. Actually, uh, I'm Amir Ghosh. And uh, in case of uh, 1970s uh, Feluda, mm -hmm. or uh, this, uh, uh, yes, 1970s Feluda, we see uh, there is no uh, media of like internet, and Feluda is not seen as using internet also. Uh, by Satyajit Ray in his stories. But in case of this uh, movie adaptation by his son uh, Sandeep Ray, in uh, the last part of one film, uh, that Gorosthan Sabdhan, they are, we have seen uh, Feluda Googling once. And uh, how do this uh, 
uh, effect, how does this effect in the audience's mind? And another thing is that in case of uh, this Sotanish, the character, the directors are taking, uh, for example, this Abid Chatterjee, he was acting as uh, Bomkes Boxi, but uh, now there is a talk of acting, uh, taking him as Feluda. Then how it will uh, affect the audience's mind? Can you please? Well, I think to give you a very quick answer, because I believe you have paused for time, thanks for your questions. Um, I think, uh, well, you see, if you have to keep, it's the same thing that's happening. It's not something unique. It's happening to Famous Five in England also. It's happening to all the detectives all over the world, all the brands. I mean, P.D. James is a different issue, but all the, all the, all the old brands are being repackaged. So obviously, Feluda, Shidhu Jatta cannot live forever, you see. So and ob obviously, Shidhu Jatta would be a, you know, a centenarian, centenarian now and with uh, sadly but inevitably impaired capabilities. So I think internet, a, a Googling and the internet would have to come in and the people we just, even if we don't like it, we have to accept it. Yeah. And it's also necessary to adapt because that's the only way the characters can Absolutely. live on. And at that note, uh, thank you so much. Thank you everybody for being here. Thank you. Thank you so much.